Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. So Serlum Ultimate just released on Android with iOS presumably being around the corner. That said, I did think it would be a good idea to try to bring some newcomers to the game. So what we're gonna be doing today is sort of a beginner's guide to the Serlum Ultimate starters and the starter classes that go alongside them. We're also gonna be talking about notable perks that you should be looking out for as well. And ultimately by the end of this video, you will have a very basic understanding of what you should choose. Serlum Ultimate is a very, very complex game. So it's extremely easy to get overwhelmed by all the information that's thrown at you so I'm hoping to help bridge the gap a little bit here that said this guide could not have been made possible without my friend Cirque and the user gay moth ant who made a very very good serum class guide that I used quite extensively to further my research with all that said let's dive in Alright, so when you boot up the game, you're given the choice of one of 15 beginner classes, each of which have their own monster to go alongside that. These classes are more than just your starter, however. This will also affect which perks you can unlock and ultimately will affect your playstyle. These can be changed later, so don't feel like you screwed yourself if you picked one that you're not too happy with. Now let's talk about some classes. First, you have the Animator class, a very interesting playstyle that focuses around this monster, the Animatus. This class, more so than any other on this list, really hinges on the starter monster with the various unlockable perks being attributed to it. Animatus itself is very special and holds the Brilliant Creation trait, which increases its attack and intelligence by a factor of 15%, per dead creature on your side of the field and increases your defense and speed by a factor of 10% for every living creature on the field. In terms of perks, some notable ones for this class are Death and Decay, Thrive on Death, and Desensitization. Next up we have the Blood Mage, who is described to be, and I quote, a deranged spellcaster. This class is focused around a pretty interesting playstyle. Basically, you get more battle power the more damage your monsters have taken. The first thing that came to my mind when I discovered this was something like Trindamir from League of Legends. Basically, lower health means more power, but also this means that you're more susceptible to getting KO'd. The starter monster to go alongside the class is the Forsaken Scourge Walker, a creature with the trait Curse of the Silent, which allows it to never run out of charges for its spells, but it does start the battle with the Silence debuff, which cuts its spell power in half. Some noteworthy perks for this class include Blood Rage and Bloodthirst, Endless Slaughter, and Masochistic Tendencies. Next, we got the Cableist class, which is really interesting. Basically, this class focuses around monsters gaining spells they usually cannot have, and on top of that, getting fresh spells at the beginning of each battle. The starter monster associated with this is the Jin Dreamweaver, who has the Chain Spells trait, which automatically casts two extra random spells after you cast one manually. This would be like the Pokemon equivalent of having a viable metronome set where you can use Fire Blast and then it just uses metronome twice right after. <laughs> Some perks to keep in mind for this class are Apex and Shimmer, Unshackled, and Temporal Concentration. Next, we have the Cleric class, which, much like any other RPG, focuses on healing and buffs, basically like a support type. As of such, you have a very fitting starter monster in the Unicorn Holycaster, whom holds the trait Divine Mending, which heals a random monster on your team for 200% of the damage you just dealt attacking. Some noteworthy perks for this class include Overheal, Consecrated Ground, and Holy Might and Lenience. Opposite to the Clerk, we have the Defiler, a class focused to debuffs and stat-reducing effects. This specialization comes with probably the creepiest starter monster of all of them, in the form of Dread Spectre, whose ability Creation Dirge decreases the enemy's attack, defense, intelligence, and speed by a factor of 25% upon getting attacked. For this class, some perks to keep in mind are Impity, Daybreaker, and Night Taker, and Hopelessness. Next, we got the Evoker class, which is your high burst damage specialization that acts like a glass cannon build of sorts. Essentially, monsters under your command can get stronger spells and cast them multiple times per turn in attempts to shut your enemy down before they can act. Do keep in mind, though, that defensive options are scarce, leaving you open to revenge kills. The starter monster associated with this build is the Spider Occultist, who runs the trait Apprenticeship, which allows it to attack using Magical Missile after your allies attack. Some noteworthy perks for this build include Outspoken, Burst, and Efficiency. 
Next up is the Hell Knight, a very damage focused class. This class mostly focuses on hard hitting attacks, critical hits, and has a smaller focus on additional effects on those hits. The starter that comes alongside this class is the Aura Heart Tripper, whose trait Pummel deals 200% extra critical damage. This is definitely a more straightforward class and should be good for newcomers to the franchise. Some noteworthy perks include Dreadnought, Indomitable, and Massacre. Next up is the Inquisitor class, which is a really interesting one. This class takes healing effects and turns them into damage by inversing their effects on their foe. This class is really versatile and comes with the starter Valerie Scout, whose trait Fight or Flight attacks enemies after your monsters get attacked. Some perks to keep in mind for this class include Flagellation, Heresy, and Shining Force. Next up is a Monk, which revolves around dodging. Piccolo would be proud. Anyways, this class essentially excels at avoiding enemy attacks whilst also countering said attacks in return. The starter monster associated with this class is the Summer Aspect, whose trait Call of the Solstice increases its dodge rate by 50% and also attacks enemies every time that dodge is successful. Some great perks for this class include Celerity, Crosswinds, and both Protective Winds and Good Karma. Next, we got the Necromancer class, a class I'm actually quite fond of and personally have been using on my main file, but I'm thinking about switching it up soon. Anyways, Necromancers excel at utilizing minions in battle for extra damage and other forms of support. The starter that coincides with this class is the Dreadhound, a monster with the ability Summon the Pack, which gives your creatures a stack of direwolves at the beginning of their turn. Direwolves essentially perpetuate extra hits, therefore extra damage after your monster attacks. Some perks to keep in mind for this class are Gravewalker, Meat Shield, and Servitude, as well as Four Horsemen. Next up, we got the Pyromancer, who of course utilizes fire in combat, whether it be invoking the burn status on enemies in order to whittle their health, or on your own monster in order to actually heal from it. The starter monster in this case is the Magma Golem, who has the Cataclysm trait, which burns enemies who attack it. Some notable perks include Burn the Corpses, Fire Starter and Living Flame, as well as Kindle the Flame and Immolation. Next, we got the Reaver, a class focused on gaining power over time. This class is another really cool one in that basically it revolves around snowballing. The starter creature for this class is Enoch's Apocalypse, whose trait Naxxer Harbinger gives your monsters 40% more power on their attacks for every turn they've been active. Some perks include Controlled Anger as well as Mental Clarity, Onslaught and Reign of Chaos, and Rigor. The Sorcerer class focuses on debilitation in that its key function in battle is to essentially snare the enemy while supporting one's own monsters. This is like the Serlum equivalent to Serene Grace Togekiss that essentially just constantly hits you with attacks that make you flinch and miss out your turn. The starter for this class is the Frostbite Yeti, which true to the sorcerer's nature will freeze enemies who attack it. Some perks for this one include Slipstream, Spell of Roots, Spell of Slumber, and a Spell of Frost. Next up is the Warden class, which is a class dedicated to empowering one's own monster by giving them various types of buffs. This is a class that inadvertently also gets stronger as the battle progresses, much like the Reaver, though this time it's by buffing rather than just existing. The starter for this class is the Impexer, whose trait Earthen Attunement gives the player team the buff Shell Bust, which lowers your defense and then damages enemies by 150% of that lost defense. Some notable perks include Awareness, Nature's Boon, and Spirit Shield. And finally, last but not least, is the Witch Doctor, a class that focuses on cursing and hexing the enemies in such a way that they end up fighting each other. So instead of worrying about your own monsters, the strategy is to utilize the enemies. The starter creature Gimp Mummy has the trait Gimp Touch, which boosts its attacks by 75% whilst also inflicting curse. Some good perks for this class include Jinx, Trance, and Initiation Rite. So yeah, there you go, guys. Just a very simple guide on each of the classes. If I were to go into all of the depth behind all of them, how exactly every perk works, this video would end up being an hour long, I kid you not. I do hope that this was helpful to at least allow newcomers to figure out what type of playstyle they have and not be overwhelmed by the large list of classes that are available right from the get-go. Let me know in the comment section if this video was useful. And I just wanted to say again, special thanks to Cirque for helping me out, as well as the Steam Guide as mentioned previously. If you are a fan of monster taming videos, definitely subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every single day. You can also follow me on Twitter, check out my Discord, my Patreon, all that fun stuff is linked in the description. Special thanks to all my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Steel Case, and Dark Persona. And with that, we'll see you next time. Peace.